Hi everyone, I'm Kenan from Cars and Bids, and today we're at Westside Collector Car Storage here in Los Angeles, California, Matt Ferris place, and today we're taking a look at the 958 generation Cayenne. But it's not just any Cayenne, it's a GTS model, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing all of its facts and figures. First, we'll begin with a general look at the Cayenne and where it fits into Porsche's past. Then we'll get nerdy and talk about some of the technical details. And then we'll take this thing for a drive. And with that, let's get started. Before I get going though, surprise, surprise, this 958 Cayenne is currently for sale being auctioned live on cars and bids. As I mentioned, this is a GTS model, which meant that it got more performance features and a more performance look over the Cayenne S. This one also has some great factory equipment, including the Porsche Sport design wheels, active lane change assist, and a panoramic sunroof. And after you finish watching this video, click the link in the description below where you can head to the live auction of this one, where you can bid on it and buy it only on cars and bids. We begin the history of the Porsche Cayenne GTS by first talking about Porsche's financial problems of the 1990s. Porsche was in dire straits as sales of their sports cars weren't particularly strong in the 90s and they realized they needed to do something. And their response was the first generation 986 Boxster. It would be an entry level car for their customers to buy and it would share parts with the 911 which meant that it was more cost effective to produce. As a result, the 986 generation Boxster was a huge success for Porsche, but they realized something. Most customers usually had one of two cars in the garage alongside their Porsche. They had an ML from Mercedes-Benz, which came out in the late 1990s, or they had the first generation E53 X5 from BMW. But the point was that they had to have some sort of practical car in addition to their sports cars, and customers were choosing SUVs from one of the German rivals. And so Porsche realized that they wanted to target the SUV segment. And in 2003, they introduced the first generation Cayenne, the 955. Well, it was met with some level of animosity. People were kind of confused that Porsche, the sports car manufacturer, was introducing an SUV. Was this some sort of cynical cash grab? No, of course it wasn't. This was a true Porsche. And as people began to buy the car, they realized that Porsche had made something special. They made an SUV that had sporty handling characteristics that was fun to drive. And that meant that, well, it was a real Porsche. It drove like a Porsche. And that really convinced consumers that this was an excellent car to have. They didn't need to have a BMW or Mercedes in the garage next to their 911. They could have an entire garage filled with Porsches. Now when the car launched, it was offered in two different trim levels. It was offered as the Cayenne S, which had a V8 engine, and the Turbo, which had a turbocharged V8. Now this was a big deal as Porsche hadn't made a V8 powered car since the 928, which discontinued production in 1995. Over time, Porsche would add even more models to the range, fulfilling more customer demand based on their needs, and they would facelift the car in 2008 with the 957 generation, which added some different stylistic tweaks to the car and refined it overall. And then in 2011, Porsche decided to introduce this, the 958 generation Cayenne. The overall design for this car was much more refined and rounded compared to its predecessors, and one of the big areas that Porsche put a lot of thought into had to do with the front end and particularly the headlight design. The previous cars shared a 996 inspired design, which, well, those headlights weren't the most popular on that car. But for this car, Porsche turned to the Carrera GT for inspiration, and that gave the front of this Cayenne a completely different look. But the changes that Porsche made in design weren't just skin deep. Porsche would also go to extreme lengths to make sure that this car weighed less than its predecessors, and they would use a lot of aluminum and magnesium in its construction. They would also get rid of the low range transfer case found in the driveline of this car, which dropped the total weight of this car down by 550 pounds over its predecessor, which is significant because it meant that this car could handle even better, but it also meant that the fuel economy was better for this car, which was a big deal as this was most people's daily driver. The model range would continue to expand as well as Porsche fulfilled more of its customers' needs, but one model they kept from the previous generations through to the new car was this, the Cayenne GTS. 
The GTS is designed to fulfill a slight gap in the Porsche range, as they wanted a car that had more performance than the Cayenne S, but didn't quite have as much performance as the Turbo, and similarly, it would fit into the price gap that existed between those two cars. And the GTS was really one car to do it all. It was a fun, exciting car to drive, but you could also put your kids in the car and take them to school or whatever you needed to do. And so truly, if you wanted to have one Porsche in your garage, well, the GTS was a very compelling option. Porsche wanted to visually distinguish the GTS model from the other cars that were a little bit lower down in the Cayenne's hierarchy, and they did so with some really cool touches, most of which were shared with the bigger turbo model. Up front, Porsche would add a different bumper with various air inlets in order to increase cooling. And along the sides, they would add these flared fender arches, again, to give it a more pronounced performance-inspired look. And further along the side, they would add a lower apron, again, giving the car a lower, more performance-focused look. At the back of the car, Porsche would add a spoiler to increase downforce with this car, but again, further visually distinguish it from the lesser Cayenne S. They would also add some cool visual touches like blacked out exhaust and a very nice interior which used a lot more Alcantara to make this car feel more premium over the Cayenne S as, of course, it was. Porsche also wanted to make some of the more premium features found in the higher tiered turbo standard on the GTS, and one of them would be Porsche's dynamic light system, PDLS, which is found, of course, in the headlights on this car. And that was the design brief with this car. It fit into the range as a higher tier model, giving you access to more premium features and better driving dynamics, but it retained a good price point that was only slightly above that of the Cayenne S. And features like these tie into the overall design brief of this car. Porsche wanted to give more premium features to the GTS that were found on higher trim cars, but they didn't want to give it quite as much performance as those cars. And they wanted it to fit into the price gap that existed between the Turbo and the Cayenne S. And speaking of performance, we now have to discuss the 4.8 liter V8 that lies under the hood of the GTS. Now it's a naturally aspirated engine, which is unique, but Porsche added some special touches to the GTS version of this engine to make it even more unique than that. Engineers would begin by increasing the lift of the intake valves by one millimeter, bringing the total to 11 millimeters. They would also redesign the camshafts to have slightly steeper cams as a result of this change. And they would add even more stiff valve springs again to accommodate this change that they made. They would also revise the crankshaft of this engine, rotating it a further five degrees before the intake and exhaust valves open and close respectively. Additionally, they would play with the engine management software of this car to accommodate all of these changes. And the result is that this car makes 420 horsepower and 380 foot-pounds of torque. It also means that this car can get from zero to 60 miles an hour in 5.7 seconds, which for a car that weighs 5,100 pounds is pretty impressive. So this engine is something special and Porsche wanted to make sure that you knew about it and they did so by enhancing its sound. There are acoustic chambers that extend from the engine bay of this car into the A-pillars, meaning that when you're in this car driving around, you get to enjoy the sound of this amazing V8 even more clearly. A sports exhaust was also available for this car if you wanted to amplify it even more, but either way, this engine sounds fantastic and Porsche went to lengths to make sure that you got to enjoy it from inside or outside of the car. For the facelifted version of this car, the 958.2 model, Porsche would switch away from this naturally aspirated engine, and that makes this example something special, as this is a 2014 model year. It was the last model year before Porsche switched to the Dot 2, meaning you get to enjoy this naturally aspirated V8. But as the saying goes, power is nothing without control, which means that we have to talk about this car's brakes, and frankly, they're massive. Up front, we have a six piston caliper with a 14.17 inch rotor, a gigantic braking setup. And in the rear, we have a four piston caliper with a 13 inch rotor. Porsche would also visually distinguish these calipers from the S variant because on the GTS, they were painted red. You could also get PCCBs, Porsche's carbon ceramic brakes on this car, and those calipers would be painted yellow. But regardless of which braking system you went with, this car has excellent stopping power. While I'm down here, I also want to talk about this car's suspension, as it's one of the most important enhancements over the Cayenne S. This version, the GTS got PASMA, Porsche's active stability management system, which transforms the way the car drives. But 
The changes didn't stop there. It also got a 24 millimeter lower ride height on these standard steel springs or a further 20 millimeters lower on the airbag suspension. Whichever one you went with, this car has a very visually different stance compared to that found with the S. The other benefit of a lowered ride height means a lower center of gravity, which when you're cornering in a car that weighs 5,100 pounds, makes a big difference to the way it drives. Another option that was available on the GTS model was Porsche's PDCC or Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control System. The purpose of the system is to counteract body roll and with a heavy car like this, well, it's a very useful thing to have. The way it works is that there are motors located on the sway bars and when the car is turned in and the computer detects that it's going to roll, these motors will apply pressure in the opposite direction that the roll is coming from. The result is that the car is much more stable. And again, in a car that weighs 5,100 pounds, that's certainly beneficial when you're hustling your Cayenne GTS on some back roads. Now that system was offered in conjunction with Porsche's air suspension system, but this car was also available with a conventional steel suspension system. So whichever one you go with, Porsche allows you to dial in the maximum fun that you want to have. The standard suspension is plenty, but if you want to make this car drive even more like a sports car, well, they give you that option as well. And now we move inside the Cayenne GTS to talk about a couple of things. And one of them will be the special touches that Porsche put in here, most notably in the form of Alcantara. They put this beautiful Alcantara headliner all through this car, and you could option it in a couple of places as well. But regardless, it feels like a very premium place. And well, that was the focus with this car. They wanted it to feel a little bit more premium than the standard Cayenne S. Another thing I want to discuss on the interior of this car would be the transmission. Now on a previous version of the GTS, you could actually get it with a six speed manual, but that's certainly not the case here. We have the Tiptronic S transmission found in this car, but it's been specifically tuned for the GTS. Porsche played around with the front and rear axle ratios in addition to the transmission in order to make it accelerate more quickly. And it's certainly noticeable in the more sporty version of the Cayenne. They also made some pretty cool software changes to this transmission that are driver focused. When you're mid corner, for instance, in this car and you want to downshift, Porsche will prevent you from doing that because it would upset the balance of the car. Another thing they added was under heavy braking circumstances, the transmission auto downshifts itself in order to maximize engine braking to further bring the speed of the car down. And these are some pretty neat touches for an SUV. It shows that Porsche was really focused on making sure that the GTS variant was extremely fun to drive. Okay, it's time to go drive the Cayenne GTS. Now, I've really always wanted to drive this car, and I really like these cars for a specific reason. This one is interesting because it's a 2014, which means that it is the last of the naturally aspirated V8 GTSs, and they are really special cars. This car also, not only does it drive well, but it also sounds awesome. Uh, this V8, I'll get on it a little bit here for you. Oh yeah. Oh, it sounds so good. <laughs> what a fantastic noise that is. Um, and that's, that's what's really celebrated with this car is its V8 engine. Uh, and an NA V8 in a car like this, I think is just so appealing. And all the, oh, the exhaust burbles, it's just, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely an experience. Um, and it just sounds utterly fantastic. Other things I like about the GTS, of course, is that it's the handling focus version of the Cayenne. So you get special suspension um, that's lower and things like that. And then of course you can option it out to make the car drive even more sportily. Um, but one of my favorite aspects of this car is the look. I think these cars look incredible. Um, I think that they're just so modern looking and just like beautiful SUVs. Uh, and I think that if you're going to have an SUV, you want one car to do it all. You, you maybe can't have a sports car in your life. Having something like this that combines those sporty driving elements into a car that you drive you know, day to day and you can put your kids in and you, know, you can haul stuff with, I think that's really appealing. Uh, and I think this car does it just extremely well. Oh, a V8. Oh, I love a V8. Who doesn't love a V8? It's, it's so good. <laughs> this sound is just awesome. I love that Porsche also piped it into the A pillars on this car so you can hear it more. I just, I think that's, that's phenomenal. The other thing about this engine uh, is the power. It makes very good power. 420 horsepower uh, and 380 foot pounds of torque is 
plenty for most drivers, I would say. Uh, and it, it certainly feels, it feels, yeah, it, it gets off the line quickly. Uh, and it just, it just hauls. Yeah. <laughs> wow, what a great daily driver this thing would be. And the downshifts are surprisingly fast. Again, this is the Tiptronic S transmission, um, but they're, they're pretty crisp. And then you punch it and it just, it just goes and goes and goes, clatters into the rev limiter uh, in, uh, in manual shifting mode. But um, yeah, it's a it, it's a it's a quick car. It, it's cer certainly not slow, uh, and for daily use, I think it would be plenty for most people. The ride quality is also excellent uh, in this car. It, it's it just irons out the bumps here in LA. These roads are okay that we're on right now, um, but it helps really iron them out. So you know, again, it, it just is akin to to how this car is set up to be a daily usable car. Um, that said, I would love to have corners to, you know, test out the cornering capabilities of this car and the handling characteristics, but we're in Los Angeles. There's really nowhere to do that unless I take it into the hills and we don't really have that kind of time, so I'm not going to be able to. But nonetheless, it's like, it's a very pleasant place to be. Um, you know, this, this interior too is great. Porsche interiors of this era are just really nicely put together. Um, the materials are nice, the fit and finish is nice. It's just, just a nice place to be. Um, and all this Alcantara really adds to it and this huge panoramic roof. Yeah, this is a place you could spend lots of time and truly, if it were your only car, I think it would be plenty enjoyable. But let's hear more of that engine. Oh. Man. <laughs> the, the, oh man, this car sounds awesome. Oh, that's so thrilling the way this thing sounds. Oh, long live the V8. How cool. Another really appealing point about these cars now is the price point they exist in. The 2014s are especially desirable, but even so, they're you know quite a discount off of what they were when they were new. Um, and this car has you know some nice tech in it too. This this would just be a, a really appealing car for somebody who wanted a you know a, a really nice daily driver, and it and it is that. It's so good at that. Um, and I think what it combines, you know, feeling special, just being that GTS model um, and the, you know, everyday usable characteristics that you that you're kind of expect with a car like this. Um, it's a really compelling package. It was compelling in its time and it still is today. Um, I actually would argue it's even more so now, um, given how these cars um, have aged. A friend of mine also in San Diego has one of these. Uh, he's had it for many years and it's been a wonderful car for him. Um, and he hauls his kids in it. Um, he would take his dog in it all the time. So it's just like, but he also has, you know, a, a Merciago in the garage. And this is a nice tandem to his Mercy uh, as like a daily driver. I think that's so cool. But let's give it some more. Wow, yeah, it hauls off. And then there are the brakes, which oh, haul it down again. <laughs> Woo! Now the car, this car is really heavy, so of course you need some pretty serious brakes with it. Um, man, they're good. <laughs> they're very good. Um, obviously, PCCBs were optional with this car. I, I don't really understand why. The benefit of carbon ceramic brakes is that they, you know, they don't wear as much, which is true. So you don't need to replace the components as as often. They're really expensive when you do, though. Um, but mostly it has to do with heat dissipation for track use. Um, I don't know that anybody's taking these cars on the track. So PCCBs might have been kind of overkill and they're not optioned on this car anyway. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, the braking quality is, is certainly ample. Six piston front, four piston rears, great size rotors. Um, you have plenty of braking power to sort of bring this car back down to earth after you've gotten on it. And it really gets there. I mean, 0 to 60 and 5.7 might not sound fast on paper, um, but an actual application in a car of this size, um, that's, it's, 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 a, it's mighty impressive. I'll, I'll say that. The ride quality in this car is also very nice. I'm driving over some LA roads that are not particularly great. Um, and the car is just, ironing things out really nicely, um, which is hardly a surprise. Um, this car is, you know, this suspension is, is very capable and that's kind of the point of the kind of one of the benefits. You have really long suspension travel uh, in this car. So you can kind of just drive around in it and drive comfortably over difficult stuff like this. Also sitting in traffic, as you might expect, this car is, you know, very composed. Um, you know, it's, it's very, 
uh, it's a, just a nice place to be. Um, so yeah, it's a, I'm, I'm very surprised at all that. I'm also surprised how much I like the sizing of this car. Um, for an SUV, it's very manageable. And um, honestly, yeah, if you're driving this car every day, you live in a city, you know, it's not so large that you, you can't use it. Um, I think it's a, a nice balance um, of size, size, comfort, um, and sporty performance. And that is the 958 generation Porsche Cayenne GTS. This thing touts an amazing, wonderful sounding, naturally aspirated V8, and it has great on-road performance, mated with the carry-all capability that you would expect from the Cayenne. And if you've been in the market for one of these, you can buy this one only on Cars and Bits. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will talk to you very soon. Goodbye.